So 4.3, if I have a vector space and I have a linear transform and I have another vector space and the dimension of this vector space is n and the dimension of this vector space is m, if I found a basis B of this side, which is made up of B1, B2, up to B, how many do I need? N, and if I had more than that, what would I know? If I gave you a bunch of vectors and I gave you too many, what would you know about those vectors? Dependent. They're dependent, right? So, and if I had the basis D, which is made up of D1, D2, up to D M, M because that's the dimension of this particular space. And if you were give if you're given L, which takes X's on this side and spits out Y's on this side, we would say that the standard matrix form of L is AX, but what's special about X? What are its coordinates? Standard. Standard. Spits out Y's. And what are its coordinates? Standard. And how did you find A? We just transform the standard bases. We just ask ourselves, where do all the standard bases go? We go to the left and ask, hey, who's the standard bases? So where does 1, 0, 0 go? Boom. First column. Where does 1, sorry, 0, 1, 0 go? Second column. Where does 0, 0, 1 go? Third column. Where would 0, 0, 0, 1 go? Fourth column. Right? We just take all the standard bases of the left and move them. That will be the matrix that does exactly what this linear transform does. Except it says, if you do it, everybody has to be in standard coordinates. If it's not in standard coordinates, we've got a problem. Everybody okay with that? Now, so that's the thing that we have to understand. The second thing that we understand is if you want to use the basis B of the left of the V vector space and basis D of the right hand vector space, how would you do that? So what happens is somebody walks up and says, I don't like standard. Every vector that I represent, I'm going to represent in basis B. Multiply I multiply it by B, and what did it become? Standard. Puts it into standard coordinates. Now, do the transform. Well, who does the transform of stuff in standard coordinates? A. A. But now it's on the right-hand side, so what's happened? What happens here is this is X, but it's been multi then that's a B. So the first thing you did is you said, well, I'm taking B times X, right? So what's happened is you have the same thing, but now it is in what? Standard. And then we finally, so this is my left-hand side, we do our transform. But the problem is it spits out the Y, and what's it in though? Standard. So how do I convert it to the correct stuff? Multiply it by D inverse and that will finally spit out the Y in the correct coordinates. And so we go through here and say, oh wait a second, I want that Y, but that Y needs to be in D coordinates and so that's going to be D times whatever that Y was. We just changed the coordinates. Sorry, D inverse. So it's turned into a couple step process. Oh, I'm in the wrong coordinates. Let's make it standard. Okay, now we're going to move it 
oh, wrong coordinates. Let's make it into coordinates of D. And so that's what each of these matrices do. But that also means that D inverse AB, if you did multiply this, right, as one matrix is called it's the matrix representing L from basis B to basis D. So it's L's representation, and it's a, it's a single matrix if we would multiply it out. Now we could look at this thing, and yes, sir. Under the second arrow, did you write uh, expanded or which what, what under the second arrow? Which part? This no, one right there. Uh, the BS coordinates from basis B to basis no, no, D. No. What is the matrix representing L? The, uh, no, I think nope. the one. So this says what you're supposed to do. Yeah. You're supposed to, you take B, that's what, man, what is that? That's B. I think that's, that's, <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, B. that's B, okay. That's like a, just a squiggle. <laughs> so you're taking it, multiplying it by B, and then it puts it into standard. We can do our transform, and it do the W space, boop, like that. Now, Calculating this thing is kind of like what we did like for that take home that I gave you, right? Where I said, not the take home, the exam that I just gave you back. Right? It's like, oh, how do I convert? You have to have the inverse of this times this. Um, just so you know, when I saw people write like say D inverse B or B inverse D, like and you left it and you, the reason why I wanted you to actually write the numbers, right? Is because a lot, not a lot, but a handful of people still get the row column representations backwards. How do you, if I give you a vector, how is it written? In a column. It's not unusual for people to just simply get those swapped. That's why I needed, the, you would have, if you did this and you said, well, D is this and B, and you didn't write the one more extra part like this, I would say minus one because that mistake continually happens. Right? I just can't assume that you know how to put the numbers where they belong because people don't know how to put the numbers where they belong. I need you to show me that you know how to do that. Okay, but anyways, just that's just a note. Calculating this, right? This is a matrix. A lot of times you call it S or whatever, and so this is a matrix. Um, if you're interested in calculating this D inverse A B. One of the things uh, that's useful on it is to understand the parts. What is A? What does it represent? The linear transform. That's what it is. It does linear transforms, but linear transforms of what? Vectors in standard coordinates, right? That's what it's going to do. Okay. Uh, what is B? It's a basis, right? But that's a bunch of columns. In other words, A is actually multiplying B1, B2, up to BN. But how do we write bases? What coordinates do we always use? Standard. Right? When I write the basis and you write things like 101 or 001 or whatever, right? However you choose, like 2, 3, 4, like when I ask you to make up a basis for P3, right? Or you make up a basis for R3, right? You just, you write them in what? You're always writing bases in standard notation. Well, that A will do what by partition rules? It distributes. And so this is actually A, B1 would be the first column, and this would be A. B2, and you'd continue to A, B, N. But what is A, B1? B1's in standard notation. So what's A, B1? It's the transform of B1. It's say, hey, where did B1 go? 
this is just going to be where does B1 go? Because that's what A does. It is literally the transform. What's AB2? Well, where did B2 go? And where's ABN? Well, where did BN go? Does that look familiar? How did we calculate A? We took where did E1 go? Where did E2 go? Where did EN go? How do I calculate AB? Where does B1 go? So I don't even have to actually do the multiplication at all. If I have the linear transform, I can actually find that matrix by just simply saying, oh, I'm just going to ask where the basics coordinates of the left map to. And that will form this matrix. And so if you want to short circuit your problem a bit, that's kind of two parts. Um, we can use, if I would like a matrix for L in standard to standard, what do you do? It's just where does the standard matrix column go? Where does the standard column go? Where does the standard column go? But on the other hand, if you want a matrix for L in B2 standard, then it's where does B1 go? Where does B2 go? Where does BN go? And this is that AB, right? Normally we would call him A. We would normally call him AB. If you would find A, write B, multiply the two, it's the same as just doing this. So that's a short way of doing it. Now, so we know how to handle the AB of D inverse AB. So I know how to quickly calculate AB. It's just this, that L thing, L thing. So now comes number two. What about D inverse AB? What could I do? To do this the longest way possible, if I wanted to do it in many steps, is you would take D, you would inverse it, you would write that matrix, you would find A, which would be where does E1 go, where does E2 go, where does EN go, then you would find B, and then you would multiply the three matrices together, and you would get one matrix. A shorter way of doing this, computationally, is you augment D with L of B1, L of B2 to L of Vn. Just do some row ops until the identity shows up on the left. If you do that, what's on the right? D inverse that, which is AB. A, and so that is the matrix you wanted. So that's a computationally faster way of doing this problem. You would simply say, okay, I need, a, I need a matrix to represent my transform. And this is where we have things. Like I, ha I have a transform. And people walk in and say, well, what are your vector spaces? Well, this is my left vector space and this is my right vector space. And it's like, well, is everybody in standard? Okay, if everybody's in standard, that's how I would find the matrix. But the person says, no, not everybody's in standard. I don't care about standard. For some reason on the left, I like this basis. And on the right, I like this basis. It's the same thing as you're working with somebody and they say everything has to be in English units. Why? Just because. And the next person you work with says, no, no, everything has to be in scientific units. Why? Just because. And it's your job to interface the two, right? That's what we do. Somebody walks in and says, I want these coordinates, I want those coordinates. I need a single matrix to do this. So I need to find that. 
You know what it means, right? That's important. What does this mean? What is it doing when you multiply things on the right-hand side? It's converting from basis B to the standard. Then what does that matrix do? Transforms it, but it's in standard. And then when I multiply by this, it finally goes into basis D. But that all can be written as a single matrix. And how can I calculate it? That. Is everybody okay with the, all the concepts of where this is starting to juggle? Okay. Uh, so if it's already in standard, we would just do the A and the, the D inverse, right? Yeah, if everything was in standard, you would just simply do the A. Yeah. Okay. Right, and at any given time, well, like what would happen if somebody says, is say, well, wait a second. I want B to be in standard, but this in D on the left. Well, that's an I, and that's gone, so I don't have to worry about it. So we always, as long as we understand the bases, we can plug into whatever we want. Okay. Now that particular thing then gets to a specific application for if you had a linear operator. What's a linear operator? It just simply means that the L is going from the vector space back onto itself. It is a linear transform. It's just going within the same vector space, like R3, R3, continuous functions, continuous functions. So if you say linear operator, it really means linear transform. It's just the fact that you're going to and from the same exact space. That's all that other word means is operator is a transform, except same space. So we'll call it operator. And what do we call it when it goes from one space to another space? Transform. Okay, you say sense. linear transform is when you go from one space to another space. Uh, this is also a linear transform, but it's like, well, it's the same space. Let's give it a special name, linear operator. It's still a transform, except it puts a little special name on it. It's like, oh, look, same space. All right. Um, we still have A. And what would happen if we were doing this and you obviously have, we have the standard basis for V. We can also have, say, basis, say, B. So you have this vector space. It has its standards. We always have the standard. But somebody shows up with their own special basis, and it's B. OK? Then, again, L as standard matrix means that A is equal to, please transform the first standard, the second standard vector, the last standard vector, and that's how we do that. But on the other hand, what about L as matrix using basis B for vectors? So you have a vector in basis B. What would be the very first thing that you would do? You would multiply it by B. What would that do to it? makes it standard. Then I multiply it by A. What did that do? It has trans did the linear transform or the linear operator. And then I multiply it by B inverse, which puts it into B coordinates. In other words, this guy here was A X is in standard, spits out Y's in standard. What is this one? This matrix times x's in basis B spits out y's in basis B. But this here is a matrix. So this is L as a matrix. And just for the sake of notation, um, for transform, we'll call it T. 
So let's just call it T for this B inverse A B. Um, what would if I moved the B's to the other side? What would it look like? Right? Now, B is a what? It's a basis. What do I know about bases? They're linearly independent. They span the entire space. What do I know about matrices that have linear independent columns? They're invertible. What's another word for invertible? Non-singular. Right? Can I ask you a quick question? Yes. So the B on the right side of the T, that is the original B. Yeah. On the right side. And it's so on the right it's, side because we have times it on because the Because right what side. we're doing, right? Yeah. But if I wanted to move it to the other side, I would multiply by B, multiply by B, multiply by B inverse, multiply by B inverse. Okay, so that's the other right. okay. We always stay on appropriate sides. Okay, just make sure. So when I look at this, I could loosely say this. You know, what do I notice? I have a matrix that represents a transform. And I have a matrix that represents the exact same transform. It's just they're using different bases, right? But it's still the same transform. And what do I always notice? I notice that the matrix is the other matrix with what? A non-singular matrix on its sides. One is there. The inverse of the exact same thing is there. And we can actually look at this and ask, like, what happens? Well, what is A? A is the transform in standard coordinates. So what happens? I switch from basis B to standard. I do the transformation. I switch back to basis B. Look at this side. What does T represent? I'm going to do the transform in basis B. That's what it represents. It does the transform in basis B. So if I had a thing here that was in standard and I multiplied it in basis B inverse, what's it going to become? Basis B. It will do the transform in basis B, but a person says, I don't want basis B. I want it in standard. <laughs> so you multiply by B and it spits out in standard, which is exactly what A does. If it's the exact same transformation, it just has different representations depending on the coordinates. We'll use a name for it, and we're going to call them similar matrices. So any matrix is similar to another matrix as long as they're equal with this, this invertible matrix on either side. Now, there's a reason for its existence. Conversion of bases with an action for this matrix. It's doing something. But if I get rid of the reason, to say, let's, it's not the only worry about the word transform. Let's not worry about anything. If you just had a matrix and you put a non singular matrix on one side, it's inverse on the other side, and it equals something else, we'll say that those two things are going to be called similar. So the definition is A and T are similar. If a non singular matrix B, which means what? That means B inverse exists. Probably the word this better. Um, a non singular matrix B exists, which means that B inverse also exists. And one matrix can be written as that matrix, the other matrix, the B inverse. Or if you wanted to write it the other way, you would have that B inverse A. Now, you can interpret it in terms of what these things are actually doing, but we could just simply go away. If you could just show this. 
If you could simply show that you can find two matrices and then come up with some sort of non-singular matrix where the inverse exists and multiply the entire thing out, we would call them similar. We could, we could divorce it from why it came into existence. But the purpose of existence was another representation of the exact same task, dual linear transformation. One in standard coordinates and one in coordinates of B. In particular on this, now like the, the book uses like A's, B's, and they use this one as a B and they use an S for the singular, for the non-singular, which is kind of an interesting label for non-singular. They probably should have picked N for non-singular, but. Uh, one of the reasons why we'll have this will be in chapter six. And in particular, what we'll have is that we will have a transformation. for standard coordinates and we would have that's A but what we will come up with is this this form right here and I suppose for the D's I probably ought to write E's instead And this particular matrix will be, ends up being a diagonal matrix. And so what happens is this. This will be, E will be a very special basis. And what I'll notice is this transform is something going on. But I would notice that if I would switch from standard into the basis E, the transform itself is a diagonal, which means this is strictly a stretching. So all that's happening is along these bases, these vectors, I have my like three-dimensional space. I would have three vectors. And then what this thing does is you can imagine that it has three hands, and the hands reach in and grab along those vectors and just simply pull. Everybody else goes according to that stretching, so the rest of the space will morph. It like gets pulled and stretched. Think of it as taffy. But anything along those lines are polars, and so it gets stretched in those particular directions, and that's what D represents. And so we can sit there and say, okay, what's going on? Well, it's best understood if we switch to this better coordinate system, and then everything gets pulled in that coordinate system. It's like grabbing in and always pulling taffy. Everybody else gets pulled to that direction. It gets stretched thinner. And then it's like, okay, well, what happened? I, don't under, I can't map that. It doesn't make sense in my mind. Okay, let's convert it back to standard, and then you can draw a picture. Because we're used to finding things in three space using these x, y, z coordinates. That's where it's at. So it's like, well, where are you at? Well, x, y, z. Well, what's happening? Well, we'll convert it. It stretches. Like, well, where are you? I don't know how to plot that. Well, we'll convert it back to x, y, z's. And you go back into standard. And that's a better way of understanding what's happening. And that's going to be eigenvalues, eigenvectors. So we will come back to this. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Yep. It's awesome. <laughs> All right. It's called diagonalization is what it's going to be. All right. That's it.